Have you ever wondered how some players can launch the tee shots with 300 yards or more of carry with seemingly little effort while others struggle to get even 200 yards? Is there some secret gadget or magic pill that only these lucky few have access to? Here's the problem that many frustrated golfers face. Because of multiple compensation patterns, it becomes almost impossible to add additional club head speed and therefore more power and distance. Here's how it works. When you cannot coil your hips, you're forced to use smaller muscles and body parts to add power to your golf swing. This will work for a little while before you either develop another layer of compensation or get injured from overuse. In other words, you either kill your consistency or break your body. When you can't coil your hips, you're forced to add another layer of compensation by either adjusting your feet or getting extra handsy with your swing. This is how many golfers literally back their entire golf game into a corner with nowhere to go but lower scores and more injuries. Now here's the really bad part. No amount of lessons or gadgets will ever fix this. But what if I told you that when you learn the hip coil principles, you can rebuild your golf swing and systematically add more torque, club head speed, and more distance. This is what the principles of the hip coil is about. So let's begin. Step number one, start with the hamstrings. Tight hamstrings will literally put the parking brake on your entire golf swing. This muscle affects the entire body, so you must make it supple and responsive. Step two, hip rotation. The hip joints are super critical to all phases of the golf swing. After addressing the hamstrings, hip rotation, both left and right, must be trained. When you do this, you will feel the extra body turn in your swing immediately. Step three, the hip fold. A clean and steady crease at the hips provides the foundation for extra distance and accuracy. The hip fold skill requires postural awareness, flexibility, mobility, and coordination. This has to happen at the address position before you start your backswing. Step four is weight transfer. To transfer power that you generate from your hip coil into the golf ball, you must be able to transfer the torque between both hips and in both directions. When you practice this skill, you will begin to harness all of the hidden power and plug any power leaks in your swing. And finally, the hip thrust. The hip thrust is the pinnacle of the hip coil and improving club head speed. When you can apply a coordinated and powerful hip thrust into your golf swing, you will have reached the holy grail of golf swing power. Now that you understand the principles of the hip coil, let's get into some specifics on how you can take each one of the principles and put them into action so you can add more distance and accuracy to your golf swing. So let's talk about the hamstrings. The hamstrings are a two joint muscle, which means that they affect your hip and your knee. This means that the exercises and stretches that you do to make this area more flexible and responsive will need to be done at both ends. So it's important that you stretch them at the hip and at the knee. At the hip, the hamstrings will allow you to keep your swing on plane and to help prevent lower back injuries, particularly on the downswing and at impact. In regards to hip rotation, we have two hip joints. We have a pelvis, which consists of the hip joints and the sacrum, but you want to have balance and symmetry between your left hip joint and your right hip joint. If you are a right-handed golfer, the right hip will tend to be more restricted just because you're loading it on your backswing more. And if you are a left-handed golfer, the left hip will behave in that way. So it's important with your hip rotation that you have rotation in each joint and to make sure that you're coordinating the pelvis as a whole. In regards to the hip fold, the hamstrings themselves will dictate your quality and ability to execute the hip fold. So you will almost connect your stretching of the hamstrings with acquiring the skill of the hip fold. The thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna coordinate your pelvis with your low back. The more solid you can make this position, the more balanced, consistent, and powerful your golf swing will be. When it comes to weight transfer, being able to load your back hip 
on the backswing and then take that kinetic energy and transfer it into the ball is going to be how you gain that extra power and torque in your golf swing. This will be accomplished through specific weight transfer drills, mobility drills, and coordination drills to be able to make that happen. And finally with the hip thrust, this is where strength and power comes into play. But before you can effectively do this, you must have a solid foundation of the other four skills, which is why it is skill number five. With the hip thrust, you will be doing things such as the lying hip thrusters, kettlebell swings, and your traditional squats to be able to strengthen, coordinate, and make your posterior chain more resilient. Take these tips and apply them to your golf swing and watch the magic happen. If you want an exact routine for your hip coil, look into getting the full hip coil secrets program. If you haven't done it already, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.